Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the Dell Inspiron 13 7000 series. Since this is a 7000 series, the next level up in Dell's product line would be the XPS 13. So let's see if this product is worth picking up. Here's the all new Dell Inspiron 13 7000 series, all new for 2015. This year you get the latest Broadwell U processors, as well as an all new design. So let's go and break down the specs. You get an Intel Core i5-5200U, 8GB of RAM, a 500GB hard drive, an Intel HD 5500, a 13.3 inch Full HD IPS display, and a 43 watt hour battery pack, all for an attractive price of $749 US. Sounds like a good deal, right? The top features a soft touch plastic finish that feels very nice, but the downside here, it is a fingerprint magnet if your hands are moist. Now the interior features a sleek and stylish aluminum finish that just looks gorgeous. You also get those chamfered edges surrounding the laptop, as well as surrounding the trackpad. Now the weight comes in at 3.68 pounds, which is about a pound heavier than the Dell XPS 13 and just a tad heavier than the MacBook Pro Retina 13 inch. The front panel features an HD webcam and a physical home button for your tablet mode. The bottom features two rows of rubber feet that help keep the notebook sturdy and well ventilated. The back side you got your exhaust port for your fans and your speaker grills. The interior also features these rubber seals surrounding the keyboard to keep the laptop sturdy when using it in stand mode. The ports on the left feature a security lock slot, AC charging port, full size HDMI port, two USB 3.0s, and a headset microphone jack combo. On the right side, you got your power button, volume down and up button, a USB 2.0 port, and an SD card reader. The SD card on here barely sticks out when it's fully inserted in. Take a look here. There is some minimal keyboard flex on the plastic surrounding the keyboard, but it's nothing to worry about. The Samsung panel that Dell chose on here is spectacular. The colors are vivid, and they just pop. The RGB coverage came in at 97%, and the Adobe RGB came in at 76%. These are excellent scores right up there with the Dell XPS 13. The brightness levels were also pretty good. No complaints here. Now since this is an IPS display, you're going to get excellent viewing angles here on this laptop. The only complaint I had on this panel was how reflective it is. So if you plan on working by windows or bright lighting, keep that in mind. The 10-point touchscreen has been smooth and highly responsive. Scrolling and multi-touch gestures make using Windows 8.1 a smooth experience. Let's get to the Dell Precision trackpad now. The trackpad surface is plastic, unlike the glass finish found on the Dell XPS 13. The tracking has been great. Two-finger scrolls and multi-touch gestures have been highly responsive. Kudos to Dell for choosing to go with the Microsoft Precision trackpad drivers, just like they did with the XPS 13. Keyboard performance has been pretty good. It feels pretty similar to the XPS 13, and I believe they are the same size too. The key travel is adequate, and the tactile feedback is great. Overall, you will be satisfied with the keyboard on here. You also get a two-stage backlighting for your keyboard, either low or high. Now the biggest difference between this laptop and the XPS 13 is obviously the 2-in-1 function mode. The first mode we have here is our laptop mode, followed by our stand mode. This mode will be highly useful for presentations and more. Next up we have here is our tent mode. This mode will be great for touch based games or just laying back in bed and enjoying a movie on Netflix. And the last mode we have is our tablet mode. Personally I find this mode kind of cumbersome and heavy because of its weight and size. But during my test while watching Netflix I didn't experience any heat or major fan noises. Now keep in mind the keyboard is deactivated once you are in these multiple modes. There are two minor complaints I have while using tablet mode. If you're lying down in bed while trying to use the tablet upright, the panel is not stable. It will usually bounce between the bottom panel. However, if it's not fully upright, the bounce is not that bad. And the last minor complaint I had was how sharp some of these corners are on the aluminum surface. It can be annoying when trying to use it in tablet mode, especially in portrait mode. The i5-5200U is a Broadwell chip that is powering this laptop. You get pretty good solid performance from this chip for web browsing, programming, to even light video and photo editing. Now keep in mind, this is the same chip powering the mid-tier XPS 13 as well. And here's some Geekbench 3 performance scores. For the single core score, I got 2630, and for the multi-core, came in at 5284. Followed by Cinebench R15 with a CPU score of 258 CB. And our last benchmark here is PC Mark 8 Home Accelerated Test, came in at 2520. With the new Broadwell U processors, you also get the all-new Intel HD 5500, which is a fairly capable integrated graphics card. So here's some benchmarks for the Intel HD 5500. For the Skydiver test, got 2,488, followed by CloudGate 1.1 with a score of 4,558. And for Cinebench R15 OpenGL test, I got a score of 24.04 frames per second. 
With these kind of scores, you can expect to play games like Minecraft, League of Legends, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, for example. And here's a quick demo of Counter-Strike Global Offensive in action. Right now I'm averaging around 31 to 34 frames per second. Occasionally it will dip to around 23 to 25 frames per second. But as you can see here, the game is definitely playable on the Intel HD 5500. And here are the video settings I use for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. With casual usage, the CPU and the body of this notebook remain pretty cool. I was even impressed with the cooling performance while playing Counter-Strike for around 30 minutes. The high CPU temperature was around 63 degrees Celsius, with an average of 50 degrees Celsius. These temperatures are very impressive. Now let's take a look at some thermal images with the FLIR 1, which is a thermal imaging camera for the iPhone 5S. The center area of the keyboard is around 38 degrees Celsius. Towards the left, it's going to get a little bit warmer at around 39 to 40 degrees Celsius. And towards the top, it's going to be a little bit hotter at around 40 to 41 degrees Celsius. Again, these temperatures are pretty impressive, especially during heavy loads. Battery life has been the downfall of this notebook compared to other 2-in-1 laptops. This is where I felt Dell cut the corner. You get a 43 watt hour battery pack, which is much smaller than other 2-in-1 laptops like the Yoga 3 Pro and HP Spectre X360. With casual browsing, mixed YouTube and Netflix stream, I was only able to get around 4-5 to five hours out of a full charge, with screen brightness set at around 50%. Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here, testing out the webcam on the Inspiron 13 7000 series. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Now let's take a quick shot of the internal components of the 13 7000 series. First up, you got your 500GB hard drive running at 5400RPM. This is a 7mm drive that is easily upgradable to a solid state drive. My average read and write speeds were around 109 to 110 megabytes a second. The fan noise levels can be loud at times, especially during heavy loads. But if you're just casually browsing the web or doing light productivity work, then the fan noise is not that loud. Next up, we have an audio test of the fans running at maximum load, and then we'll shut off the laptop to hear the difference. The Dualband AC7265 is a 2x2 wireless car from Intel that offers good range and solid performance. Overall, the connection has been solid. Followed by our one dim slot for our RAM, all of the Dell Inspiron 13 7000 series features 8GB of RAM. The two bottom side facing speakers were good, the sound quality was adequate, and the mid-range levels were well balanced once I tuned the settings on the Dell Max Audio Pro. Here's a quick sound test of them in action, I'm going to start off at 50% and go up from there. So let's get to the conclusion of the Inspiron 13 7000 series. First of all, this is a 2-in-1 laptop that retails for $749 US, and I feel like it offers a great bang for your buck. Now you get that Core i5-5200U, 8GB of RAM, an IPS panel that looks gorgeous, 4 multiple modes that would be highly useful for many of these students out there, and you get that slick and stylish aluminum finish. Now the only downside here is you guessed it, battery performance. I was only able to get around 4-5 to five hours out of a full charge. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the Inspiron 13 7000 series. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I want to thank you guys for all the support as I just surpassed 12,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Again, thank you guys.